AI, 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 AI. Everything nowadays is about AI. And I, like the next tech loving person, is absolutely into testing it all out. And while it seems most of the conversation around AI is focused on how AI is going to replace artists, but in today's video, this is more about how an AI can be your best assistant. So Polar Next 2.0 is now in beta that you and I can both test out. And they did sponsor this video, but they gave free reign, good old creative control to give criticism, feedback, and all that good stuff. I've seen Polar Next in the past, and this 2.0 update finally got me excited because they've updated it enough to where I think it's really worth talking about now. A couple of basic things to know is that one, there is a web version of this that you can use inside of Chrome, but personally me, I love native apps, and so I'm happy that 2.0 added the ability to download it straight to your computer. It's also important to know that with all the different AI features we're going to be talking about, nothing is uploaded to the cloud. So again, think of this as your own personal AI assistant. It's not using resources from other photographers and artists, and it's not exporting any of your data to the world. Also, if you have used or looked into Polar in the past and the thing that turned you off was pricing, trust me, stick around for this video because they've got a really cool update there. But for now, let's jump into the software. So when we first open it up, we can start a new project here. I feel like a lot of you don't know, but before I got into video, like many other creatives, uh, I spent a good long many years in this still photography world. So, so while this piece of software honestly is good for almost any type of photographer out there, I know they have a pretty solid heavy focus on like weddings, events, and in situations that you will pretty much be taking hundreds or thousands of photos that you want to quickly, but still very creatively edit. So while I did shoot weddings for a good number of years, I thought it'd be fun to actually go back and look at my wedding, which Michelle and I have not looked at uh, our wedding photos in a long time. And so if I can get some quality photos out of this, I think it'd be fun to just kind of show Michelle uh, kind of an updated version. Let me go in and find one of the raw photos here. Shout out to my friend Christian and my sister Chelsea who shot our wedding. So once you have your folder selected, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna go through and call these images because that is new in the 2.0 update or do you wanna jump straight into editing? Now again, most of the time, if you're gonna be going through thousands of photos, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you call it first before you get into editing. And you can see that pretty much instantly starts opening photos. So what it's doing here at at the bottom is using AI to essentially group these photos together. And on the left hand side, we can actually see how we want them to be grouped. So if you want more groups, you can go default or more. Personally, I like the fewer groups just because it makes it almost a little bit easier on my like ADHD brain. Because then I can go into something like this and I can see 11 different images that are somewhat similar. So here we have Michelle getting ready. And you'll also notice something that when faces are in side of the image, we get this little box on the right hand side here that it's analyzing all the faces inside the image, not just one. And what's cool is in the bottom left hand side, we can actually get a little score here. It's going to look at how open or closed are the eyes and how much in focus it is. Now, almost similar to every other photo editor out there that you're going to go through these groups is you can use your different number keys to essentially rate the photos, right? So I can go through. I love that one. We were so young. This was, this was 2018 for anyone interested in knowing. We look very different, but she looks absolutely stunning as always. And what's cool here is I can also use my up, down, left, and right arrow keys. So you'll notice that right now I'm inside the group. So I'm going left and right, but then I can just go down and go to the right. And then now I'm in this next group and it just makes it really fast to go through all these images. And like I said, if you don't want any grouping, you can just quickly turn this off and it's just gonna, you know, be like any other strip and you go through all your photos kind of in order. And it's fully subjective, but I actually find that I'm really liking the different groupings uh, just because it allows me to go through them kind of with a more a tunnel vision view of what scene I'm looking at. So let me go through and at least get a couple dozen of these images kind of uh, selected that I want to then go in for editing. Now across the very bottom, you'll also notice different ways that you can sort through these images as well. Uh, very typical stuff. You can use camera metadata. If you have multiple different cameras, you can sort it by cameras. You can go by file type. 
pipe you can go through, when it was captured, all that good stuff. Uh, and you have different ways of categorizing them. You can star them, you can color, you can flag. So however it is you like to select the images that you like, you'll be able to then also organize how you want to edit those photos, which I'll show you in a minute. But for now, I'm going to go through and just kind of, uh, you know, five star rate some of the photos that I want to move to the editing section. This is definitely one of those images that I was talking about that it's extremely helpful uh, to have this, this sort of face focus bar on the side because we have a ton of people in here. Uh, we have a, quite a number of these different shots. And rather than me like zooming in and trying to scan this entire thing, I can just quickly look on the right hand side here. There's no red, so no one has eyes completely shut. With people like Kenny and my brother-in-law who are kind of a little squinty, but uh, still perfectly fine. Everything's a little soft in terms of focus. We did not have much budget, so I rented pretty inexpensive expensive cameras uh, for my sister and my friend to use. So definitely keep that in mind. So now I'm going to go to edit photos and that's going to bring up this next dialog box that again allows me to choose what sort of filtering system I want to edit with. So I've just been doing the five star review sort of thing. So I'm just going to select this and I'm going to export the selected. So the editing portion I think is more where the AI is implemented. I think a lot of us may first think that like, oh, AI calling means that the AI is going to uh, pick all the photos that it thinks are best, which I would be all for as long as it didn't like remove the files or anything. You can always go back to the calling section and add more if you want. It would be nice to have that as an option maybe in the next update. But when it comes to editing with AI style, you have a couple choices here. You can use a polar pre-trained AI style. You can edit manually just like any other program without any sort of AI. Or what I'm gonna choose is create a new style. And once you actually start using this, you can reuse from a previous project. But for now, we're gonna set up a new style here. And the final thing you need to choose is do you want express or advanced? And this has to do with how much do you wanna train the AI? Because if you've used any AI tools before, I'm saying AI so many times, I know. But if you've used any of those tools, you know that a lot of times the more information you give it, the more accurate it's going to be able to spit out a final product. But I'm gonna show you the express setup just so we can see what sort of results we can get. And we can always add more later. So now what we're gonna do is create what's called a reference edit. So I'll start with this one. So on the left-hand side, we can see all the different camera EXIF data and everything. We do have presets. You can import presets. Uh, if you have Lightroom ones, you can import those from here. As you can see, you can import different LUTs. Uh, and it also, of course, comes with some of their own. So I'm gonna check those out. I'm kind of liking this one. And then of course, on the right-hand side, we have our different uh, edits here. I love things quite dark. I am not a fan of blowing highlights or anything like that. And they did add a spot healing brush tool in this uh, update, which is cool. They actually did a really good job and that was very fast. So to be honest, I'm pretty happy with uh, this edit. It's pretty simple, but I like it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark this as a reference edit. And so what it's gonna start to do is now process all of the other images that I've saved and it's going to edit them in that style. One, that was insanely fast. And as I go through these, like these are all very much in that same vibe. It understood that I definitely prefer nothing overexposed. And for example, like this one is slightly darker than this one. And so of course I can go through and I can brighten it up a bit to match. And what's nice is let's say I had a vastly different photo than all the rest is I can go through and maybe adjust this one in the highlights and I can mark this one as a reference edit that uh, then will impact and it will essentially learn and say, oh, okay, I guess you like this style as well and adjust all of the photos. But the nice small detail that I think is very important is the lock edit. And so if you edit a photo and you're like, I love this, I do not want this to change, 
you can lock it and it will prevent the AI from making any more adjustments to that photo um, as you go forward. This one definitely needs to be brought down a bit. And so as I make that change, it automatically locks the edit because I fine tuned an already AI adjusted image. And I love the fact that it does that by default because I can imagine forgetting to do that. And then you go to make another reference edit and then it you know, changes all these edits that you fine tuned, that would be really frustrating. So that's awesome. And so once you finish going through all the photos, you're happy with them, uh, then it's just a matter of exporting the photos. Now, this is the cool part when it comes to the pricing. You can download or open up in the web browser, pull or next, and use it absolutely free. You can do all of the things that I just did 100% for free. When you create a new account, you get 2000 credits. And the only time you use credits is when you actually export a photo. And so when I export the photo here, you have your different export options. And once you've used up your credits, if you're enjoying the platform, you wanna keep using it, there are three different pricing methods that you can use. One is a pay per export, which I think is roughly like five cents an export, or you can pay for a unlimited plan and you can pay that yearly or monthly. And because Polar Next knows just how awesome you guys are, if you use this code in the next two weeks from the date that this video is uploaded, you can actually lock in the same price as Lightroom, $9.99, and that price Price will remain the same for as long as you keep the subscription active. And let me tell you, that is one of the best deals that I've seen for any sort of AI software. So if you're interested in learning more, you want to get signed up, definitely check out the link in the description. Again, huge shout out to Polar Next for sponsoring this video and allowing me to just be open and honest about my experience with the software. And thank you all for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.